Your shit. Spit on you every time, kid. Get good. September 7th, 2020. A group of survivors load into my lobby and Haddonfield is burned in the loading screen. I play the match out, I lose. I Q kill her again, I get the same survivors. They were survivor friends. In our previous encounter, they were confident. One of them had an object of obsession, a perk at the time that gave permanent wall hacks by looking at the killer. He was relaying information, not only to his teammates, but also to the very one he was in call with. Two streamers playing Survivor together, chances are they were on Discord. Object of obsession, swift, communication, the most broken strategy in the game. The match loaded up, and I was fully prepared to take them down. This is the story about how I got my revenge against the most toxic Twitch streamer in Dead by Daylight. It's another object match. So what we gotta do is just play super proper. Speed is the name of the game. Drop early. I need to give her no time to react. Every time I approached a survivor, they ran away extremely early. They avoid us like the plague with object of obsession and sprint burst. I wondered if it was possible to even get pressure. <laughs> Kate began clicking her flashlight and I immediately noticed the team's weakness. He was overconfident. Having beat me in the past with an unlimited amount of information, he probably thought she was unstoppable. Get hard object of obsession. By the way. Drop in the world. I was on the biggest map in the game against survivors only letting me cross map them. This was the reason my object of obsession was reworked. According to the official Dead by Daylight Wikipedia page, object of obsession was a controversial perk often used by one survivor and a survivor friends to stake out and relay the killer's actions and location to their fellow teammates while keeping distance. Post patch 4.7.0, this was the reality for killer mains, never catching survivors and getting four men outed every game. In this match, it was the major factor keeping me chained to the wall. These object matches were some of the most stressful games I played in Dead by Daylight. The players who used these tactics were the type who never liked losing. They would stop at nothing to try to ensure a victory. <laughs> With only one generator left, I downed Kate and hooked her immediately. This was the object user. After relaying my position to her teammates over and over again, he was the only one on death hook. If he wanted any chances of being able to do anything, the chains needed to be broken. Kate needed to die. I think that's fine. Ah! They're gonna try to protect her. But I don't really, it doesn't really matter. Ah! From David taking a hit to Kate deadharding our hatchets, everything seemed to be working against us. I downed the object user, and the last streamer popped at the five minute mark. With no one relaying our location to the other survivors, it was still a chance we could make this work. Our best bet was now a Blood Warden play. By hooking a survivor whilst an exit gate is opened, we can prevent survivors from leaving for 60 seconds. The trap was set, and all I needed now was a piece of bait. I began hunting Lisa down to prevent the survivors from leaving. We're gonna bring this guy to the basement, or try to at least. Picking Lisa up was our one-way ticket towards getting a 4k. If I could get this hook off, the remaining survivors would be stuck in the match for 60 seconds. It's a DC. 
Lisa disconnected from the match just as we reached the mouth of the basement. Having lost to them in our previous endeavor, they had to know I had Blood Warden. By disconnecting just before we got our hook, they could use an exploit to prevent Blood Warden from activating and denying us the ability to get any kills. That's an easy 7 day ban, again. In Behavior's October 2022 developer update, a revision was made by the team to crack down harder on toxicity. In the upcoming patch, the temporary ban duration would be increased for rule infringing players. Under the subsection of unsportsmanlike conduct, Behavior instructed the player base not to report players for disconnecting by leaving the match before killed or sacrificed. But it seemed we ran into someone that was exploiting. Under the subsection of exploits, exploiting bugs, errors in design, or undocumented features to obtain a competitive advantage was enough justification for a temporary ban. This wrongdoer disconnected to prevent Blood Warden from activating, securing escapes for the remaining survivors in the match. If killers could disconnect to instantly win every game, the survivors would think it'd be exploiting too. The Twitch streamers began talking in endgame chat, and I engaged in our first brutal exchange. Luck, the seven day ban. This one's gonna be a yikes for me with that tunnel on a good man for you. Seven day <laughs> ban. Seven day seven ban. ban. Oh my god. LOL, calm <laughs> nerd. You got, you got shit on twice, twice in a row. In a row. I killed you. Once today. You got shit on twice in a row. Once today. And yesterday. Look. Then you tunnel. Grats. LOL. 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 Damn dude. I had respect, but now your dog. LOL. Try it. Okay. Either these guys are really dumb, or at least pretending to be. I filled out the form on exploiting the behavior, and they continued typing away. Your shit. Spit on you every time, kid. Get good. I'm gonna use my universally accepted overpowered add-on because I got ran. You guys are super entitled. From relaying information with object of obsession, to using exploits to get what they wanted, these were the most toxic Dead by Daylight players you could face. As something I saw on a daily basis, I shrugged off the match and carried on. I began playing more matches, only to hear the same Twitch streamer molding about me on his stream. This guy thinks he's a good huntress, but he plays against bots all day. As soon as a good player goes against him, he gets clapped. The match had made him so mad, he took it to another level and changed his stream title to I'm good sometimes. Coconut RTS tunnels me with ear dozen heads because he's a good huntress. He was upset I called him out for exploding, and it didn't seem he was used to losing. As someone who wanted reassurance, he changed his title and started talking smack about me. But little did he know, his worst fears would come to fruition. I would have the pleasure of being able to face him again. Oh, we got him again. Yo, let's go. He appeared in my lobby, and it was liberating to know I didn't have to hold back. Normally, I try to make sure everyone has fun, but this time I threw on some ear dust and heads to see how he would react. Oh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Not only that, let's just, let's just freaking, we're gonna go all out. Someone's gonna disconnect. Woo! Here we go! This is Christmas! It is it's Christmas! The match loaded up, and I was ready to push his ego to its limits. Gonna DC. Uh, it's fine. I mean, it's, it's, it's good. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. For someone who seemed pretty upset, he was all bark and no bite. His pride wouldn't let him lose another match, so he told his friend to disconnect with him. After bringing the match to a close, I had a more clear sense of the situation at hand. All right, hopefully we never get this guy ever again. So if you play like a dick, you will get the big D. That's just what happens. I searched Dead by Daylight Twitch streamers on Google, and one of these suggested, why are Dead by Daylight streamers so toxic? Why are Dead by Daylight players so toxic? It's the number one thing that shows up. It is November 2nd, 2022. It's still there. <laughs> Having gone against the same toxic players three times, I learned their biggest weakness. They never liked losing. No matter how big their ego was, it wouldn't be enough to protect them from the pain of a loss. I opened up my web browser to check if he had changed his stream title. I checked. The butthurt man still has the title the same way. What the heck? I started thinking the toxic streamer finally realized the grave he dug himself into. Since I was in his region, I would get him. Over and over and over again. 
Not only would he be unable to escape death, but he'd be unable to escape the one he hated most, me. Your shit spit on you every time, kid. Get good. I'm good sometimes. Coconut RTS tunnels me with ear dozen heads because he's a good huntress. I played a couple more matches of Huntress, and this would be the fourth time he would appear in my lobby. My friend Yurib was in the lobby, so I opted to not use Eerie's this time. I equipped an infantry belt and an oak haft as preparation for our next duel. I'm not Eerdison heading. Having gotten my revenge in a previous match, the debt of toxicity had already been paid forward, but it was different this time. For every action, there's always a consequential reaction. In this case, there's no excuse for just being a terrible person. I would do everything in my power to make sure he wouldn't escape this match. Ooh. Ah! We're not here to dodge the lobby. No, sir. So freaking close, man. Our first encounter would be at a rock loop. It would be very difficult to land shots over the boulders, especially since I knew they were skilled. So close, man. Drop. Just as our hatchet was about to hit him, a perfectly timed dead hard stopped us in our tracks. Is With the first generator powered, I decided to test the waters to see if I could catch them making a mistake. Oh! Close. As a 110 killer on a high loop, the generators would be powered in no time. I committed to closing distance to force them off this pallet. Ah! Okay. No. It was very apparent he was overconfident again. As I chased him into the shack, I vaulted the window and predicted his next move would be bold. I approached the doorway and threw a hatchet towards the pallet. To my surprise, it didn't land. Straight. As I cornered her into a dead zone, I downed her and put her on the closest hook. The third generator popped, and I opted to camp him until he was dead. This would be the third time we killed him, and I didn't want any of his teammates to save him. From changing his Twitch title, exploiting in a swift, and disconnecting against our Eerdus and heads, this would be the tale of the time that I went against the most toxic Twitch streamer in Dead by Daylight. If you guys enjoyed this adventure with me, feel free to leave a like or a sub, and I hope you guys enjoyed coming along on this wild ride. And don't worry, there are many more to come.